So I do about two grams of omega-3. Usually it's about two to one ratio EPA, DHA. Then I do, let's see, so the omega-3, then I do vitamin D. So I take around, I total around 4,000 IUs of vitamin D a day. So I get like 2,000 wow. in a vitamin D supplement plus 2,000 in my, in my multivitamin. So I take mm. a multivitamin as well. And then I take um, magnesium glycinate. And then I take another product called magnesium, which is like a powder I put in my water that I take all my vitamins with. And it's got like a mixture of some other magnesium, mm -hmm. organic magnesium salt as well. And then I take alpha lipoic acid. Are you wanting all, all, the, all, all yeah. the perfect stuff? Okay. Alpha lipoic acid, which has been shown to blunt the advanced glycation end products. So it's been uh. shown to lower those in clinical studies. In fact, people with um, type 2 diabetes, it's been shown to improve their ages. So I take that. And then I take um, benfotamine, another, another um, vitamin that's been shown to help with advanced glycation end, end products. I'm pretty... That's uh, an important um, aspect I, that I'm focused okay. on. And that's just a fat soluble bi vitamin B1. Hmm. Take that. And then I take lutein, zeaxanthin for my eyes. I take CoQ10. And then I take, um, I'm probably gonna miss something. I take sulforaphane. Sulforaphane helps detoxify a lot of terrible things that we're exposed to like plastic chemicals like BPA, mm. but also air pollu pollution factors as well. It activates a very powerful detoxification system wow. in our body, so I take that. And then... Um, Where do you think you'd be without taking supplements? Do you think you'd still be as healthy and optimal as you um, are? Or depends. is it just more of a psychological boost for you? No, like, okay. no. I mean, so look, I'll tell you, the omega-3 one's critical. So right. There's studies that have now shown that having a low omega-3 index is like smoking. Come on, yeah. really? Wow. It's like smoking. So omega-3 levels as me measured by the omega-3 index. So this is like measuring it in your red blood cells. It's a long-term marker of omega-3. It's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful study that was done by Dr. Bill Harris. It was, it was a Framingham cohort published a few years ago. And he, he looked at people's omega-3 levels, so high or low. High would be 8%, low would be 4%. He's the pioneer of the omega-3 index. And basically, people that were non-smokers but had a low omega-3 index had the same life expectancy as smokers with a high omega-3 index. Wow. I mean, if you look at their life expectancy curve, they're overlaid. I mean, it's like... I wish I could pull up the figure. It's wow. mind blowing. And the only way you can get omega three is that from fish. So no, yes, seafood is seafood is the the major. That's that's what's going to drive your omega three index. You, it needs to be EPA, DHA. That's from the marine sources. Um, ALA, the plant source of omega three, can be converted into those two other omega three fatty acids, but very very inefficiently. And so. Um, Really, you need to get the marine source. For people that are vegetarians or vegans, microalgae is the source of so microalgae oil. Mm -hmm. You have to take a lot of it. Wow. But studies have found that wow. so people with 4% omega-3 index, that's low. That's the actually, people in the U.S., the average omega-3 index is like 5%. Um, if you take 2 grams of omega-3, so supplemental omega-3 per day for, was it like 3 months or so, then, or three or four months, then you can go from a 4% low omega-3 index to a 8% high omega-3 index. And people that have an 8% omega-3 index have a five-year increased life expectancy compared to the people with low. Come on, if really? If you think about Japan, Japan, they have a five-year increased life expectancy compared to the U.S. on average. They there live a lot, five, of a lot of fish in their, their diet. Their omega-3 index is 10%. Ours is 5%. So their average omega-3 index is 10%. Our average here in the U.S. is 5%. And that's just connected to fish. It's uh, connected foods. to fish intake. Yeah, right. Wow. So, but you can't eat too much fish because of mer mercury, right? Or Yeah. I mean, it depends on the type of fish you're eating too, sure, right? Sure. So like if you, the, the best types of fish to eat would be salmon, mackerel, sardines. Like these, mm. these are high omega-3 but low mercury fish. Wow. And there's actually even studies showing that the omega-3 fatty acids protect against the mercury to some degree. You don't want to eat swordfish already. Swordfish is very high. Okay. Like that, that's a very real thing. If you can get like really high mercury levels and yeah. it can be bad. Okay. But if you're eating, like I eat salmon like three times a week, you know, I'm maybe four sometimes. Wow. I eat, I eat salmon a lot. Um, but I also take my omega-3 supplements. So it came back to that question is, do you think you could get away from all the supplements? I, I mean, I do think that there's a few that are really important, omega-3 and vitamin D, you know, you, you, you can make it from the sun. It is a 
it gets converted into a steroid hormone. Very, very important. Very important. It's a steroid hormone regulating, you know, 5% of the human genome. Right. So without it, lots of stuff's going wrong. But, you know, there's a lot of things that regulate whether or not you can make vitamin D, right? Mm. Where you live, mm -hmm. um, your, your, how, how much melanin you have in your skin, that's a natural sunscreen. If you wear sunscreen or if you have a lot of protective clothing, as you get older, you're four times less efficient at making it. So lots of things, mm. right? So that's where the supplement does huh. help. So I don't, you know, the, it, it, I, I would say no, I would, I would, want, I would want those wow. couple of supplements. Do you have a list on your site anywhere of all the supplements you take? I don't have a list on my site. I do have, um, I do talk about it on my on my membership. I have a lot of Q and A's I do once a month. Gotcha. I, I I'm thinking about something like you know having some kind of maybe list because other people have lists of the supplements. Everyone's I got the list, right? They're not right? necessarily right. Really? <clears throat> so. well, I want your list then. That's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> but my list changes a lot. I, that's the thing. It's like what you took two years ago is different than this year. It, it is. It changes a lot. Like sometimes I... You need, a, ro you need a rolling like, list, you know? You need an yeah, updatable like, what, list. What do I... Like, I'll, I'll, like, is this really... Like I used to take NAD, like, you know, precursors. If you could only take three supplements a day, and this would, you're only allowed three right mm -hmm. now, what would you take consistently? I would take omega-3, vitamin D, and sulforaphane. Okay. To simplify it for people. If they're like, I can't take these 30 supplements and I don't know what, you know. Yeah. Which brands are good, which ones are not good. But I would definitely make sure I'm getting my magnesium for my food because <laughs> I left that one out. So right? magnesium. I left that one. Well, if I only had three. Right, right. But then you'd be focusing on the magnesium. I would be getting my foods. leafy greens and my nuts, like almonds, are very high in magnesium, Jeez. right? Okay. Because, because I want to make sure I'm getting, you know, meeting the RTA. Okay, top five supplements. What if you could only get five supplements a day? What would those top five be? Okay, omega-3. Yep. Vitamin D, yep. sulforaphane, mag magnesium, and the multivitamin. Okay. That seems that's, more reasonable. That's the, top, that's the top five. What is sulforaphane? Yeah, sulforaphane is it's a compound that is made from a precursor that is found in certain types of cruciferous vegetables. So these okay. are broccoli, cauliflower, uh, Brussels sprouts, uh, cabbage, those types of vegetables. Um, it's really, the, the precursor is called glucoraphanin, and when you break the plant, like by chewing it, or you break the plant wall, the glucoraphanin become, comes in contact with an enzyme called myrosinase that breaks it down into a compound called okay. sulforaphane. Okay. So, sulforaphane, sulforaphane. Um, is really high in broccoli sprouts. In mm, fact, it's yeah. 100 times higher than mature broccoli. Wow. Sprouting broccoli is I like another broccoli option. Sprouts. Yeah, yeah. Broccoli sprouts is another option. Um, I prefer to just take a, a, a supplement that yeah. you have to find a good one. So there's a couple of good ones, Avmacol um, and Prostaphane okay. and Brock. They're all sort of those are like the high the high quality um, sulforaphane supplements. But sulforaphane activates a pathway in your body called NRF2. That's a major major activator of um, a lot of different genes in our body that get rid of toxic compounds like carcinogens so like if you're eating let's say you're eating bacon you can be exposed mm -hmm. to something called heterocyclic amines which can cause cancer well activating nrf2 through sulforaphane can stop your body from getting those terrible heterocyclic amines right wow so it's very good at detoxifying carcinogens but also other factors like air pollution benzene that you breathe in I, I'm concerned with plastic chemicals like BPA, BPS. Uh -huh. I think it's very good at detoxifying that because of, it does the same. Um, it activates pathways that are able to take BPA and make it water soluble because you excrete a lot of BPA through your urine. So wow. that's why I think sulfur is okay. very important. Amazing.